Good evening, folks, and welcome to Backers Hill Baptist Church. This is Wednesday evening, the 3rd of June, and it's our live lounge. We've got a slightly different format this evening. The reason being is that I'm going to be addressing and speaking on a tough topic tonight, something topical that has been in our news this past week, and I'm going to want to be talking to you biblically about it. So a bit of a different format. In a moment, I'm going to ask Isabel to open in prayer, and then my daughters are going to do some scripture reading. And one of our worship leaders, Pete, has written a song in response to the happenings in the news of the past week. And that's going to be part of tonight as well. Thank you for tuning in. And over to you, Isabel, to be praying for us all. So welcome this evening to our church family and our friends and our friends online. Uh, let's just pray together. Father, we come to you and we, we thank you that we serve a mighty God. And Lord, I just pray for every life tonight. I pray for every heart, Lord, to be open to the word that you've put on Kevin's heart to minister to your people, Lord. And I just pray for uh, your light to shine brightly in every life in Jesus' name. So we ask, Lord, that you'd come in your power and that you'd strengthen all of us as your people so we can stand firmly on your word and do as your word says. So bless every home tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi, Rain. We're looking at a very big topic tonight and you've got a scripture to read to us. Would you go ahead and read it to us, please? John 13, verse 32 to 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if some, if you love one another. Oh, thank you, Rain. Hi, Ruby. You're going to be reading a very powerful scripture to us this evening that's part of the teaching I'm going to be bringing in a few moments' time. Would you like to go ahead and read it? Okay. Um, Revelation 7 verse 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Oh, thank you, Ruby. Now this morning you sent Mum and Dad a scripture, and I've gone ahead, you don't even know this, I've gone ahead and put it up on our church Facebook page, a very powerful scripture speaking into uh, what we're going through at the moment. Would you like to read that to us? Yes, it's from Isaiah 1 verse 17 and it says, Seek justice and correct oppression. Thank you so much for sharing those scriptures with us tonight. Amen. Folks, this evening I'm going to be talking to you on the subject, I can't breathe. Racism is a problem that we simply cannot ignore. We cannot run away from it. It is an issue today and it has been an issue throughout history. In the news, the inhumane and merciless brutality demonstrated towards George Floyd last week was an appalling act of injustice. My heart, like I'm sure your heart, is more than heavy on hearing the news of the report of the killing of George Floyd. We are sadly reminded that the evil of racism is still rampant across the globe in very obvious ways as well as in subtle ways. Folks, tonight I want to categorically state that Buckhurst Hill Baptist Church is opposed to racism. As a community of believers in Jesus Christ, we share a hunger for God's kingdom and seek to confront evil, injustice and hypocrisy and challenge worldly attitudes to power, wealth, status, and security, both within and beyond our church. I want to state that racism must stop. And my prayer is that this moment in history will be a moment of lasting equality, transformation, and change in Jesus' name. I am sickened to my core by the news of this brutal attack and am opposed to racism in all of its forms. The Bible is perfectly clear.
that there is no room for racism in God's plan for his people. Every single person is a unique creation of God Almighty. He loves them and he loves you with his divine and unconditional love. The imperfections of humanity, the rebellion of humanity and the sin of humanity has created a divide between humanity and God. God who created humanity. And because of this divide with God, there is a divide between people. But God formed a plan, a plan to close that gap and draw humanity back to himself. And that plan was Jesus Christ. And that plan still is Jesus Christ, who heals lives, saves lives, and changes hearts, and gives people the ability to love God and to love others. We remember that everyone is made in the image of God for his glory. And I am convinced that the call of God's people as Christ's body on this earth is to fight against injustice and to show the love of Jesus to champion and protect those that face unjust hostility in their everyday lives and to seek to see the kingdom of God increase. The Bible tells us that God created every race equally in his image and that he loves every race equally. We find this in the book of Acts chapter 17 verses 26 and 29 and I'll quote to you from Acts chapter 17. For one man from one man he made all the nations. We are God's offspring. Folks, racism of any type is completely wrong in God's eyes. And because it's wrong in God's eyes, it must be wrong in our hearts and minds and lives as well. God's love, God's great unconditional love is not restricted to one group. It is not restricted to one race. And neither should our love be restricted. When Jesus went to the cross, he gave his life for people from all races and all backgrounds. And one day in heaven, we'll join with all those for whom Christ died. The book of Revelation paints this picture for us in Revelation 5 verse 9. And I quote, from every tribe and language and people and nation. I am always moved by the scripture we found in Mark 11, verse 17. Jesus speaking, he declared, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all the nations? I want to categorically state that racism is evil. Racism is sin. Racial or ethnic prejudice is a sin in the eyes of God and no Christian should allow their hearts to be filled with prejudice. You see, prejudice and hate go hand in hand and hate is the opposite of God's love. Racism is wrong because it fundamentally has its roots in pride when people believe that they are better than other people. And pride is always a very serious and very dangerous sin in the eyes of God. In fact, the Bible offers us this warning as found in Proverbs 16 verse 5. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Folks, there is only one Christian response to racism, and that is become actively anti-racist. The late Billy Graham 
put it this way. He said, the closer the people of all races get to Christ and his cross, the closer they will get to one another. Jesus said something amazing. In fact, he spoke about a new command. And in John 15, verses 12 to 14 and 17, Jesus had this to say. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one is greater than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. He said, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's own life for one's friends. You see, there is no room for racism here. There is no room for us to treat one person one way and someone else differently. Because in Christ there is no distinction. We are all to love and to be loved. When God sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, as we see in the book of Acts, in Acts 2, they spoke in all the languages of those present. In that crowd, there were Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. These are people of all nationalities, ethnicities, and affiliations. The word of God came to them all without preference or prejudice. The gospel is the declaration of God's love for all the world, a love that is so great that he laid down his life for us. God is not a neutral observer in matters of justice, racial or otherwise. God sides against injustice. With countless numbers of people of color in this country and everywhere else, where people cry out in pain, I can't breathe, God sides with you. This past Sunday, we celebrated in the Christian calendar the day of Pentecost. And in my sermon, my Pentecost sermon, I taught from the Old Testament prophet, Joel. And we looked at the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 28, where God said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. The word there, spirit, in the Hebrew means breath or wind. God wants to pour out his spirit. God wants to give his people breath. In Acts chapter 2, we read of the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came like a rushing wind and tongues of fire appeared. We need the wind of the spirit for the fire of the spirit. We need both the wind of the spirit and the fire of the Spirit in our lives. Our world is in shock over the shocking death of George Floyd. The president of the Baptist Union of Great Britain has written a very powerful article on his Facebook page. Yinka, the president, writes, and I'll quote an excerpt, I can't breathe is a phrase that black people and people of color have to work through in the West, in everyday life, in a way that may, in a way that many white people will never have to face. George Floyd's dying plea is a literal metaphor for the cruel injustice that continues to be inflicted on people of color. As Christians, 
we should take a stance against racial prejudice and where we can do our bit to stand up against it and any oppression of minorities wherever it rears its ugly head. That's a writing by Yinka. I've posted it on our church Facebook page. Please visit it and look at it and read it and share it appropriately. The title of his writing is Five Ongoing Issues That Are Choking the Life Out of Black People and People of Colour. I am reminded of a quote by Nelson Mandela. This is what he had to say. No one is born hating another person because of the colour of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. That's Nelson Mandela. So what can we do? We are in a practical season of teaching in our church. What can we do? And we spoke about this at our church leaders online meeting on Tuesday. We spoke about this in depth and we prayed into this. So the first thing we can do is, number one, we can pray for justice. Folks, we can pray for justice in this situation. We can pray for comfort for those who are grieving. We can pray for strength for those who are feeling weak after years of battling. We can pray for love for those who are fearful. We can pray for faith for those who are disengaged. We can pray for peace for those who are angry. So the first thing we can do is we can pray for justice. And the second thing we're going to look at tonight, which we can do, is this. We can stand up for justice. So number one, pray for justice. Number two, stand up for justice. Folks, we know that prayer is fundamental to seeing an end to racism and an establishing of justice. But I do believe the Bible also emphasizes that we are called not just to pray, but to live out our faith in action. The book of James, chapter 2 and verse 17, reminds us, and I quote, So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. You see, we as Christians, as believers in Jesus, have an active faith. Diedrich Bonhoeffer wrote the following. Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. The world has gone crazy on social media at this time. And social media can be a powerful platform. But I believe that social media platitudes and words are simply not enough. What we need to be doing is taking a stand in solidarity alongside the oppressed. And that means taking action. And very often, action can come at great personal cost. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the ultimate example of the personal cost of the action he took to make a way and to show us his love. I am glad that I am part of a church that is a racially diverse church and where people are all equal and we are all on an equal playing field at the foot of the cross of Jesus. We are part of a church which celebrates diversity and seeks to live out a kingdom culture of the love of God. I want to say to you today, that it's never too late for someone to change. Jesus said in Mark 10 verse 27, With man this is impossible, 
but not with God. All things are possible with God. Maybe you need a change of heart today to live in and experience the love of Jesus. It's not too late. Jesus can make the change in your life if you let him. Heaven has no room for racism. And we see this. Revelation 7 verse 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Folks, the Holy Spirit does not discriminate. You know, people often divide themselves by age, gender, race, skin color, language, culture, clothing, education, housing, income, ethnic origin, and national origin. People divide themselves, and then they divide themselves again. People tend to hang out with people who fit in with their profile, and they tend not to hang out with people that don't fit their profile. But God is not like that, and Christians should not be like it, that. God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't discriminate on the basis of gender, because the book of Joel, chapter 2, says, Your sons and daughters will prophesy. God doesn't discriminate on the basis of age, because again, Joel chapter 2 teaches us your young men will dream dreams and your old men will see vision. God does not discriminate on the basis of social class. Because again, Joel chapter 2 teaches us, even on my servants, I will pour out my spirit. Friends, when the Holy Spirit is poured out, the result will be a people that are truly transformed through the, through the love of Jesus Christ. The result will be a church that lives a kingdom culture, a church that celebrates diversity, a church that loves everyone, a church that is filled with the passion and the zeal and the enormous power of the Holy Spirit and the love of God, a church that will allow God to ignite kingdom passion in the heart of every believer. I don't know about you, but I certainly want to be part of a church like that. I do not want to be left on the sidelines watching the action on the field. In the midst of trouble around the world, in the midst of destruction, in the midst of terrorism, in the midst of a global viral pandemic, in the midst of natural disasters, in the midst of falsehood and moral decay, God still says, I will pour out my spirit. Friend, would you allow him to pour out his spirit in your life? Maybe you have prejudice in your life tonight. Please, I implore you in Jesus' name, confess, repent, Turn to the Lord. Allow him to change your heart. Maybe you have been hurt by racial discrimination. I implore you tonight in Jesus' name to find the healing and forgiveness that only Jesus can bring. In conclusion, I'd like to read Psalm 139 verses 7 to 12. And remember God wants to pour out his spirit. With that in mind, Psalm 139, 7 to 12. The psalmist writes, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me, even then, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for the darkness is as light to you. 
Folks, I pray that you experience the salvation Jesus brings. I pray that we will see people through the eyes of the love of Christ our Saviour. And I pray that your heart would be healed tonight in Jesus' name. We are going to play out by a song that has been written by Pete from our church in our worship team, a song that he has written in response to the devastating death of George Floyd. May the Lord bless you all and keep you, make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, lift up his countenance towards you and give you his peace in Jesus' name. He was a man of peace He left a legacy For those he loved And for the world to look upon Then came the beast Appearing from the ground With its two horns It came and stole his breath away Oh, sight of sorrow, oh, blood of Abel cries out for this brother and for peace to reign among us. Monstrosities are swallowed in the nailing of our Maker to the tree of our salvation. Where does he cry? in your bones pulled out for us that very day when the spirit came will you breathe the breath in your lungs will you live the life in your bones cause the life of an innocent man was taken away from him see through the surface and see through colours on our skin And see the person hidden that's within Oh, to the King of Kings And every tribe will worship the true Lamb And Babylon crumble down Hey! But there is breath in your life in your bones pulled out for us that very day when the spirit came will you breathe the breath in your lungs will you live the life in your bones cause the life of an innocent man was taken away from him there is breath in your lungs there is life in your bones Pulled out for us that very day when the Spirit came Will you breathe the breath in your lungs? Will you live the life in your bones? Cause the life of an innocent man was taken away from him